I'm so relieved. There's a certain stigma to carrier branded gadgets. When the carrier label is the only label, we're often in for a bumpy ride. Thankfully, the Revel lineup has been a respectable series of phones. I got an old one recently from a buddy TK as part of a challenge we were producing, following that up today with the newest Revelry Plus. And I really like what I'm seeing here. A part of the conclusion, one of the main takeaways right at the top of this video. If one of your friends or family members shows up with one of these, you don't have to do that gasping through your teeth face. <laughs> Couldn't help that, sorry. The consumer who walks out of a T-Mobile store with one of these did not get screwed. They got a solid lower mid-range phone. Now, one of the first picks is simply the design. You know, T-Mobile joins Motorola and Nokia in mid-rangers that blend right in with the shiny build we expect on more expensive phones. Now, I don't love notches, but consumers don't seem to care. So while the extra, extra screen is of dubious benefit, the look is expected now that there's more display on the front of the slab. I am a gadget snob, and I'd be totally lying if I said I wasn't spoiled by high refresh rate displays on expensive phones. The Revelry has a nice mid-range 1080p screen, but it is one area where you might notice a difference in price tier when you hold it up next to a more expensive display. Better than fine as a get the job done mobile computer. But what's impressive is seeing this level of performance in a sub $400 phone. The Revelry just nipping at the heels of my precious Pixel 3a. Where these 600 series chipsets could be punishing in the past, you can get a fair amount of heavy lifting out of this mid-range today. I'm not exaggerating. We can shoot, edit, and render 4K video on this hardware. Premium phone can render almost twice as fast, but the Revelry was still able to best my $1,000 laptop in a short 4K rendering test. Even this phone is overkill for folks who are looking to just cover the basics. The area you're apt to see a few more stumbles, more demanding games. Again, plenty of power for more casual experiences, card games, gem swaps, but more lush graphics or games where you'd want to keep a higher frame rate, you'll need to turn down that eye candy. I'd like to point out that for a dual stick shooter you can also play on PC or the Nintendo Switch, that's not terrible performance for a $350 phone, that's actually pretty good. The multimedia experience is aided by a solid dual speaker setup. It's not true matched speaker stereo, but the output is hanging in there against phones which cost at least twice as much. And we've got a headphone jack. Not an audiophile headphone jack, but this will always be more convenient than messing around with a dongle. It's a shame that this port is becoming a budget feature, but if you plug in some decent low impedance multi-driver earbuds, the revelry sounds okay. Though I was pleasantly surprised by this camera setup. Full featured. Manual photo controls. Options for raw capture. 4K video from the rear and the selfie shooter. And a night mode. Now, the obvious comparison will be against a Pixel, and the Revelry is not quite as effortless to use. But this is better performance than many might expect at this tier, with a few advanced features that flagship phones can sometimes omit. Now, switching briefly to the radios, folks who are shopping a less expensive device should not be punished with poor network performance. The Revelry proved to be a mid-pack performer in my less than scientific testing around town. It consistently fell between three and five decibels behind the Pixel 3a on LTE. That was also backed up by Wi-Fi performance in the toughest spot in my garage. We saw a similar reception deficit over that cheaper Pixel. On these mid-ranger chipsets, we might not always be able to max out the full bandwidth of the cable connection that we're plugging into. This $350 phone is not quite keeping up with premium Androids, but it is doing a bit better than my iPhone XS. My only potential concern with the phone, and it's a concern that we can't quite answer, will be long-term software support. Now, it has received a small performance update in the week that I've used it, but there aren't any serious promises being made here about future operating system updates. It's a largely stock Android Pie device, but it's not branded Android One, so I can't proclaim this as a pro or a con yet because we haven't had time to see how T-Mobile supports it. Right now, it's just some food for thought. But what good are fun phone features 
if the device can't last the day. And in my limited battery benching, this is a sweet spot for consumers. It's a full HD display, mid-range chipset, and a respectable battery capacity. Under my use, it easily made it past dinner time, though I wasn't gaming that hard on it, more listening to a lot of music and podcasts. And in my timed media benchmark, it landed the same kind of performance as a premium option. So it's gonna prove handy for watching a little bit of video while you're out and about. The recharge situation is a split discussion. Using the charger in the box, results aren't very exciting. You're not going to get that quick top off, but if you've got a beefier charger handy, like say my Razer phone charger, you'll see this little window pop up on the revelry. Turbo power, you say? Those recharge numbers look a lot better. So some kind of fast charger might not be a bad accessory to add to the price of this phone if you pick one up. So let's wrap this up. Where's that leave us with the T-Mobile Revelry Plus? I'm so happy this is a good phone. It's up to us techies to help change the narrative on mainstream consumer performance. But we can't keep reviewing phones hiding behind the most basic lowest common denominator use and then only recommending the most expensive devices to our family and friends. Here in the USA, more competition is sorely needed at the $400 and under tier of gadgets, where T-Mobile is making a terrific argument for a store branded phone. The premium phone tier is increasingly pushing against a much more aggressive workload where those phones are starting to disrupt tablets and laptops. Even if we're looking at some moderate to heavy use, there are plenty of applications where the Revelry Plus can hang just fine. I got this phone between the OnePlus 7 Pro, the Xperia 1 and the LG V50. Using it as a phone out and about there's not much to separate the experience between this and much more expensive devices. Against the obvious competitor, the Pixel 3a is the safer bet for longer term software support, is a slightly, slightly more powerful performer, and the camera is certainly easier to use. But for 50 bucks less, T-Mobile can offer more premium build quality and expandable storage which ain't nothing to sneeze at. And that's the critical win here. And the happy surprise for a carrier branded phone. It's actually a good phone. And you don't need to make that face if your mom picks one up without consulting you first. I'll have some links down below where you can find more information on the T-Mobile Revelry Plus. As always, thanks so much for watching, sharing these videos, and subscribing to this channel. More than just nerding out on thousand dollar pocket computers, we also need to make sure we've got some good recommendations for consumers at all price tiers. If you would like to help support the production of those conversations, there are links below, or you could consider joining the list of names currently scrolling by on your screen. It's an awesome growing community of fun, like-minded tech pals, and a huge resource for me in producing future videos and reviews. They're good people. I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.